So, welcome to Sir Wayne's Accounting Lectures, ang accounting discussion online na klaso ng approach. Hindi review, kundi first view. Kaya asahan na mayroong konting jokes, kwento, at kung ano na pang segue na nangyayari sa isang normal na klase. So, today, ang pag-uusapan natin ay patungkol sa investment in associate. Pero bago ang kanyang accounting, dun muna tayo sa terminology na associate. Bakit yun ang ginamit sa investment na to? Okay? Basically, when we say associate, related siya dun sa terminology na association. Yung alam na natin, yung grupo. Therefore, yung associate ay isang tao na bahagi dun sa grupo na yun. Kaya siya naging bahagi kasi basically, pinakikinggan siya. Kasi meron siyang influence dun sa samahan na yun. Ang pinupunto ko, para mas maunawaan itong investment in associate accounting, dapat una muna nating pag-usapan yung tinatawag na significant influence. Okay? Ang sabi dito, significant influence is the power to participate in the financial and operating policy decisions of the investee but not control or joint control over the policies. Unang punto, may dalawang bahagi sa investment, di ba? Meron tayong investor, tayo yun, at basically yung pinaglagyan ng ating pera, yung pinag-invest natin, yun na nga si investee. Kung sakaling ikaw, okay, ay pinaglikinggan, may influensya ka, at yung influensya mo ay hindi lang basta maliit, but rather significant, in a sense na meron kang kapangyarihan, Okay? Na mag-participate sa pagagawa ng kanilang policy, whether that is financial or operating, therefore, maaari mong gamitin yung investment in associate accounting. Yan yung main ingredients. Okay? Binabanggit pa dito na iba pa yung control. Kasi when we say control, ikaw talaga yung nasusunod. Okay? Whether that is control on your own or joint control, iba pa ang accounting yan. Pag significant influence, pinakinggan ka. Maaaring iba ang naging final decision, pero ang punto nakapagsalita ka. Naka-influence ka din naman. Maaaring hindi ka nanalo. Or the other way around. Kaya ganun yung naging decision kasi nakapagsalita ka. So again and again, ang significant influence, hindi mismong ikaw yung palaging nasunod. But rather, ang sinasabi lang dito, you have the power to participate. Okay? Therefore, maaari mong gabitin yung investment in associate accounting. Okay? Ngayon, ano ba yung mga ebidensya parang masabi na itong si investor ay merong significant influence? Meron na, dito tayong example na lima. Una is yung representation in the board of directors. Basically, yung investment in associate kasi is equity instrument pa din naman. Therefore, yung management ng corporation ay pinatawag na BOD. At sila basically nga ang nagde-develop ng mga policy. The fact na ikaw investi ay represented sa BOD, therefore, meron pang significant influence. Kasi pag nag-meeting, makakapagsalita ka. O, di ba ka? Okay, the second one is participation in policy making process. So basically, nandun na din sa definition, di ba? Kasi nakikiparticipate ka, okay? Even if you are not part of the board, pero kung sakaling kasali ka talaga, therefore, it is an evidence, okay, of significant influence, okay? Then, material transactions between the investor and investee. Kasi maaaring yung materials mo, okay, ay sa kanila nang gagaling or the other way around. Ang ibig mo sabihin, meron din kayong business dealing. Kasi maaaring si investor at investee ay parehas company at nagkakaroon sila ng transaction. At hindi lang daw basta transaction, but rather material transaction, meaning malaki. Okay, paano ka makakakuha ng isang magandang deal kung hindi ka pinakikinggan, kung wala kang influence. Okay, so therefore, This is one also of the evidences. Okay? And then, interchange of managerial personnel. Maaaring ikaw investor, meron kang top management or may manager ka. Then, yung manager na yun, napunta din dun sa other company, kay invest din na nga. Okay? At nagmamanage din siya. So, basically, may influence ka dun. Kasi yung top management mo, ba't nadadala mo dun? Okay? Yun yung punto. Then, the last one is, Provision of essential technical information. Meaning yung mga internal information, technical information, trade secrets, ay ano, na ibibigay sa'yo or nalalaman mo. Okay, bakit mo nalalaman yun? Kasi malamang meron kang influence. Di ba nga ang banggit natin kanina? Kasi associate ka. Kasi kasamahan ka. 
Pinakikinggan ka, pinaniniwalaan ka nila kasi may influensya ka sa kanila. Okay? So again and again, whenever, okay, these are present, okay, one or some of these are present, okay, basta ang punto, when you can, ano, as, uh, parang provide, okay, or nasa, masasabi mo na meron kang significant influence, maaaring gamitin yung investment in associate as we do accounting. Okay? Ngayon, okay, in actual practice kasi, dun to ina-assess. Pero as we do problem solving, okay, paano natin malalaman yung yung ano yung problem kung investment ng associate ang gagamitin? There is what we call presumption. At kahit sa totoong buhay, okay, we can also presume. When we say we presume, we assume, di ba? Meaning parang uh, kung wala namang ko kontra, therefore maaaring ito yung sinakayo. Ang ibig ko sabihin, nandito po yun, okay? There is a presumption that if the investor holds directly or indirectly through subsidiaries 20% or more okay of the voting power of the investee it is presumed that the investor has significant influence unless it can be clearly demonstrated that this is not the case sa madaling salita kung sakaling ang investment mo ikaw si investor okay sa kay investi, yung percentage of ownership mo ay anong sabi? 20% or more. What can we say? Kahit hindi na natin ito pag-usapan, okay? Meron bang significant influence? The answer is yes. That is the presumption, okay? Ang sabi pa, whether you hold that directly or indirectly. When we say directly, ikaw mismo yung nag-invest kay uh, investi. Diba? At meron kang 20% dun. So therefore, that is directly. Yun namang indirectly ay parang ganito. Okay? So ikaw ito, ikaw yung investor, ayan. Tapos, meron pang isang company, ayan. Meron pang isang company at isa pa. Okay? Let's say ito, siya ang 100% owner nitong company C. Tapos ikaw, meron kang 20% interest doon. So what can we say? Meron ka rin bang parang 20%, okay? A investment doon sa pangatlong kumpanya. Kasi ang sabi mo, sila naman ang may-ari ng 100% na yun. Maaaring meron. Yun yung sinasabing indirectly. Marami bang ibang paraan, pero ang punto lang natin, when we say indirectly, okay, hindi direct yun doon sa mismong company na kausap mo. Pero, kumbaga, kung meron mang mga dadaanan, doon din naman yung So again, our example, nag-invest ka dito kay Company B at si Company B may 100% ownership kay Company C. Ay therefore, what can we say? Siya naman ang may-ari nun. Ay ako'y may-ari nga. So man naman may-ari din ako ng Company C. Parang gano'n yung sinasabing indirectly. And again, okay, 20% or more. Kasi so kumbaga, malaki kasi yung percentage of ownership mo. Kaya malamang pag nag-election, maaaring makapasok ka sa BOD. Na dahil malaki ang inilabas mong pera, yung percentage mo, malamang nakikisali ka sa decision making. Kasi kung para sumusugal ka din dun sa negosyo na yun. Therefore, yun yung presumption. Okay, ang sabi pa, okay, dapat yung 20% or more ay saan? Sa voting, okay, voting shares, okay? Sa madaling salita, ordinary share lang ito. Kung sakaling ang investment mo ay preference share, kahit 90% ka na, 95%, The fact na hindi yun nakakaboto, therefore, wala pa rin significant influence yun. Okay? Kailangan talaga ay ordinary. Ayan. Ang sabi pa nga, again and again, unless it can be clearly demonstrated that this is not the case. What does it mean? What if, okay, 80, ano, uh, 20% ka nga, pero, pero, wala ka nitong mga to. Kayang patunayan na wala ka dyan sa mga yan. Kasi let's say, meron kang kontrata na bawal kang makialam sa management. Okay? Therefore, meron bang significant influence? Eh, di wala. Okay? The other way around is true. Kung sakaling less than, okay, less than 20%, ang hawak-hawak mo, di ba ang presumption, wala kang significant influence. Pero, kung yung other things ay mapapatunayan na meron, kahit na si 15% ka lang, 12% ka lang, Therefore, maaari pa din magkaroon ng significant influence. Ang sinasabi po natin, in reality, 
ang priority to determine whether we use investment in associate accounting is yung significant influence na itong mga to. Ito talaga yung importante. Itong 20% na to, wala lang yan. That is just a presumption. Ito pa din ang dapat na mapatunayan. Okay? Pero ang sabi nga again, kung nagsosob tayo at wala namang po kontra, okay? therefore 20% or more is an evidence that we have significant influence na nga. Okay? Another thing pa, okay? Again, yung 20% ay ano nga? Ordinary shares. Okay? Walang preference. Nga lang, paano kung sakaling merong tinatawag na potential ordinary share? Ano yun? Potential nga eh. Nangyari na ba? Ordinary share na ba? Hindi pa. Pwede lang maging. Okay? Katulad ng ano? Convertible bonds. Convertible preference share. Ano ibig sabihin ng convertible? Maaaring mapalitan. Let's say, dati kang bonds, magiging kang ordinary share. Okay? Ngayon siya ay pwede nang makonvert. Okay? Kung bagay yung kanyang time, para pwede nang makonvert ay, nang, ay nangyayari na. Hindi pa lang ginagawa. Kung bagay hinug na, pipitasin na lang. Kung bagay sa puntas. Okay, ang punto, kasali ba yon sa determination ng 20% na to, ng ating presumption? The answer is yes, provided they are currently exercisable. Okay, again, convertible bonds or preference, or kung meron kang option to buy the share. Ano, kung naalala nyo yung discussion, patungkol doon sa share right, di ba? Or other things, na makatangga pa ng option to buy, okay? Tapos dahil doon, makaka tataas, okay, tataas ang iyong ano, percentage of ownership, okay, therefore, yan, kasali siya sa computation para ma-determine itong uh, presumption of significant influence, pero ito yung quotient, okay, when we compute kasi yung accounting niya, hindi kasali yung potential ordinary share, kasi hard facts na eh, magkano yung share mo dun sa income, Okay? Therefore, dapat yung actual ordinary share. Again, yung potential, ginagamit lang sila dun sa presumption to determine whether you have significant influence or not. So let's say nalaman na meron kang significant influence, pero 18% lang yung actual share mo. Naging kang 22% kasi meron kang potential. Ang ibig sabihin, tuloy gagamitin mo yung investment in associate. Pero pagkakwenta ng income, imumultiply mo ay hindi dun sa 22% kasama yung potential. Hindi yun, but rather yung 18% ang gagamitin mo. Kasi yun naman talaga yung aktual. Ang sinasabi ko lang paulit-ulit na, okay, maaaring magamit ang investment in associate account kahit less than 20%. Provided you can demonstrate control. And the other way around, paulit-ulit na po ito, ano, maaaring hindi gamitin ang investment in associate account, kahit more than 20%, provided you cannot demonstrate significant influence. Kasi nga, ito ang pinakang importante dyan. Hindi naman ito kasi presumption nga lang. Okay? Too much for that. Let's try to move on. Doon naman tayo sa accounting side. Una, how do we measure investment? Okay? By the way, when we acquire that, therefore, initially, we measure that at cost. When we say cost, it is the acquisition cost. Included, syempre, yung transaction cost, if any. Okay? And then, subsequently, we will use equity method. Okay? Basically, itong method na to is an accounting policy. Pero hindi siya pagpili. Ibig ko sabihin, wala ditong option. But rather, it's just parang konsekwensya. Okay? Or effect siya. Ang ibig ko sabihin, dahil meron kang significant influence, therefore, ang accounting para sa'yo ay equity method. Other way, ano, other way around. Kung sakali mo wala kang significant influence, bawal mo itong gamitin kahit gustuhin mo. Or, kung sakaling meron ka dating significant influence, pero nawala, okay? Dati part ka ng BOD, nawala, hindi ka nanalo kasi umunti yung share mo. So what can we say? Patuloy mo pa bang gagamitin yung equity method? The answer is no. Okay, going back, gagamitin mo nga lang itong equity method kung meron kang significant influence. At hindi siya a matter of choice. But rather, because that is the case na nga. Meron ka nga kasing significant influence, automatic na yan. Okay? By the way, what does it mean? 
Equity method is based on the economic relationship between the investor and the investee. Yung okay, nga relationship nila. Kaya nga merong equity. Di ba? Ang equity yung parang capitalization. Okay? Yung mismo, parang yung investment of the owner. Okay? So parang owner ka, bahagi ka ng owner. Okay? In a sense that they are viewed, yung investor and investee, okay, as single economic unit. Iisa lang daw sila. Okay? One and the same entity lamang. Okay? Sa point of view ni accounting, si investor at si investee. Okay, yun yung equity method. Okay, kasi nga, ito ay equity. May equity ka kasi sa business na yun dahil nga meron kang influence. By the way, ano yung kanyang accounting? Dito natin mas pag-usapan. Una, malamang, we will buy shares. Okay, acquisition yan. Initial. Okay, we are going to debit investment in associate account and we credit cash. Okay, again, itong account na to ay lumalabas lamang kung ang method ay equity. Okay? So that's it kasi acquisition. Meron pa tong mga complication, may iba pang mga concerns dito, pero hindi natin pag-uusapan, but rather sa kasunod na video lecture. Ang sinasabi ko, paano kung sakaling yung acquisition price mo ay kaiba dun sa fair value nung binibili mo. Okay? Let's say dahil meron under or overvalued assets. Okay? Something like that. Pero hindi siya pag-uusapan ngayon. It's just that the proforma entry, whenever we purchase the share, whenever we initially invest. Okay? Yan lang po yan. Okay, then let, let's try to move on. Okay? Net income. Ayan. So, ang sabi, hindi kailangan mag-declare ng dividends ni investi para mag-recognize ng income si investor. Bakit? Sapat na nga daw yung kumita lang si investi. Okay? Kasi nga, sila yung iisa. Again, kahit walang declaration ng dividends, provided merong income si investee, kabahagi na nun si investor. That's why may entry ka kung sakaling may income sila. You debit investment in Asia to increase your, ano, your uh, investment account. Kasi ang sabi mo, we are one in the same. Kumita, darapur tataas ako. Okay, darapur you debit this asset account. And you credit investment income, whether that is distributed or not. Okay? Meron lang dito ang kaunting caution. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng net income ay pumupunta kay investor, yung percentage niya. Ang ibig ko sabihin, okay, kung sakaling merong preference share at merong silang dividends o sila cumulative, ang punta po natin, ano, okay, kung sakaling merong preference share, okay, una mo munang ibibigay, okay, yung share ni preference sa income bago mo pa kunin yung share ni ordinary, okay? Nasa pagkakataong yun, kung ilan man yung percentage of ownership mo, darapun yung matira, yung earnings available to ordinary, yun yung sayo. Okay, again, caution lang yun kung sakaling may investment. Eh, may, may preference share, okay? Ang sabihin ay, hindi pa naman tayo lumalayo dun sa dating konsepto sa topic na corporation na kung sakaling kumita, sino unang binibigyan? Si preference, okay? At ang matitira kanino? Kay ordinary. Darapun, ito yung sinasabi natin, matitira kay ordinary. Ordinary tayo. Percentage nun, nung natira na yun, yun yung recognize natin na investment income. Okay, tumuli pa tayo. May mga pagkakataon yung corporation na mimigay din naman ng dividends. Sa so point of view mo, because you are one and the same, yung dividends ay hindi na siya treated as an income, but rather as a return of your investment. That's why we are going to debit cash and we credit investment in associate. Parang ang idea nga, nag-invest ka kasi eh. So parang pag nagbigay ng dividends, nag-withdraw. Baga sa sole proprietorship at sa partnership, nag-withdraw. That's why you debit us and you credit your investment in associate account. O okay, ikabawasan siya. Okay? Now let's try to move on pa. Okay? Mayroon pang ibang mga kakaibang mga posibleng mangyari sa yung investment in associate. Itong tatlo kasi, yun yung normal na senaryo. Yung nag-invest ka, mayroon kang share sa income, mayroong dividends. Pero may mga pagkakataon, there is also what we call other changes in equity. Okay? Itong part na to ay hindi madaling maunawaan kung sakaling bago ka palang natututo ng accounting. Ang ibig sabihin, kung hindi mo pa alam ang ibang topic sa accounting, medyo vague pa siya. Kasi let's say itong revaluation surplus, hindi mo pa alam. Okay? Kasi investment pa lang yung topic, nandun pa siya sa topic na property, plant, and equipment. Pero kung sakaling marami ka nang napag-aralan at binabalikan mo lang ito, ay nako, simple lang to para sa iyo. Okay? Ang ibig mong sabihin, explain na po natin ano, para saan yan, other changes in equity. 
Ibig sabihin, hindi lamang yung profit or loss or yung operation mo, okay, yung income mo, okay, ng business ang nagiging dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng change sa equity. But rather, meron pang ibang mga bagay. Katulad na nga ng other comprehensive income. Okay, let's say yung pagpili ng iba-ibang method pa. Let's say sa PPE, pinili nila fair value model, okay? Dahil yun yung kanilang pinili, therefore lalabas yung account title ng revaluation surplus. Meaning yung pagtaas, okay, mula dun sa cost, going to the fair value of the PPE, meron yung difference. Okay, di ba sa historical cost model, wala tayong pakialam sa fair value, di ba? Kasi nga, uh, stable monetary unit principle. Pero dahil nga, we choose the fair value model, kung sakaling tumaas yung value ng isang asset, particularly PPE, we recognize that and the account title of revaluation surplus. Kung iisipin, di ba parang merong income? No, di ba may income? Kasi nga, tumaas yung value. Okay? Nga lang ang sabi ng standard, hindi pa daw siya income ngayon. Okay? Kasi wala naman ng operation yun. Ginamit nila yung account title na revaluation kasi nag-revalue ka. Surplus kasi pataas. Ang punto, hindi siya income, pero bahagi siya ng ano, ng equity. Parang yung other comprehensive income na nga. Okay? Ang punto, isa pa. Okay? Dahil tumaas yung equity, kayo ba ay iisa? Are you one and the same? The answer is yes. So therefore, kung sakaling tumaas ang equity, whether that is because of your operation, investment income, or through other changes, you have to increase your investment in associate account. Nakukuha po ba kahit sa result of operation o ibang bagay, basta tumaas ang investment mo. Okay, dahil may changes sa equity, dahil equity method ka, i-debit mo yung investment account mo. And same goes through with the other way around. Kung sakali namang bumaba, therefore, you are going to debit whatever is the, the reason for decrease. Okay, katulad ng, ano, ng net loss. Okay? Kung sakali sa halip na kumita at nalugi yung negosyo, kahit hindi pa, kahit, kahit kung baga wala naman declaration ng dividends whatsoever, basta alam mong kasali ka, nalugi sila, therefore you have to recognize the loss. Loss on investment and debit, at malamang dahil nga nalugi, yung credit investment in associate account. Okay? Meron lang siyang side topic pa. Yung tinatawag na invest with heavy losses. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Nag-invest ka, meron kang significant influence. Nga lang pangit yung ano, nasamahan mo. Palubog pala. Okay? So what can we say? Through time, okay, palaging nangyayari itong entry na to. Sa madaling salita, okay, yung investment in associate account mo, pababa ng pababa. At maaaring ang maging value niyan ay zero. Pero in reality, yung business na sinamahan mo ay nag-i-exist pa rin. Ulit, isa pa, okay? Yung investment in associate mo ay maaaring maging zero balance. Pero yung, yung business itself, si investi ay nag-i-exist pa rin. Okay? At patuloy na nalulugi. Okay, pwede ganun. Okay? Anong gagawin natin? What is the accounting for that? Napakasimple po nun. Okay? We are going to recognize the losses, meaning gagawin mo itong entry na to hanggang sa kung magkano lamang ang balance ng investment mo. Ang ibig ko sabihin, let's say meron kang investment na 100,000, yearly nalulugi ng 20,000 yung share mo. So what can we say? After 5 years, okay, magkano na ang balance ng investment in associate account mo? Malamang zero na kasi nakalimang 20,000 na. Okay? Pwede ba na yung business itself, kahit zero, na, zero balance ka na, ay nag-i-exist pa rin? The answer is yes. Okay? So therefore, dun sa ika-6 year, ika-7 year, paano kung nalugi pa rin? Okay? Nang take 20,000 ulit, magagawa ka pa ba ng entry na debit loss on investment in credit investment in associate? The answer is hindi na. Kasi nga, zero balance ka na. Okay? Yun, tapos na yung entry sana dun. No? Kaya nga hintayin na lang natin na tuluyang magsarado. Ang punto ko sakaling palubog, kung magkano lang in-invest mo, malamang ganda lang yung pwedeng mawala sa'yo. Okay, gayon, Okay? Paano kung sakaling hindi ganun yung nangyari? Hindi sa tuluyang lumubog. But rather, dun sa ika-8 year, siya'y kumita. Okay? Anong gagawin natin? Will we recognize immediately the income? Kasi ang sabi mo, investment in associate naman kami. Okay? I-recognize mo ba 
itong investment income ka agad. The eighth year na kumita siya. Okay, and the answer is no. Ay sir, hindi ba nagsimula ako sa zero balance? Hindi po ganon, okay? The moment na masiro balance na siya at patuloy pa ding nalulugi, hindi ka man gumagawa ng journal entry patungkol dun, binomonitor mo naman kung magkano yung mga succeeding losses. Ang ibig kong sabihin, kung dun sa example natin, nalugi ng 20,000 na 20,000 pa at hindi ka nag-record, meaning may hindi ka na record na 40,000, unrecognized losses ang tawag dun. Kung sakaling maging income, kailangan mo nang ma-recover yun. Ang ibig kong sabihin, let's say kumita ng 30,000 yung share mo, Magre-recognize ka na ba ng income? The answer is no Kasi nga meron kang 40,000 na hindi ni-recognize At kung sakaling later on Nagkaroon pa ulit ng income Let's say 20,000 Ire-recognize mo na ba yung buong 20,000? Hindi hindi Kasi di ba 40,000 yung original mong losses na hindi mo na-record? Na-recover na yung 30,000 kasi nga kumita na. Ngayon may balance ipang 10,000. Ngayong taong ito, nung kumita ng 20, what can we say? Hindi mo i-recognize yung buong 20, but rather 10,000 lang. Kasi nga, isi-zero balance mo muna. Okay? Kung sakaling hindi man ako naiintindihan, may mga problem solving naman tayo patungkol sa investment and heavy losses. Ang sinasabi ko lang nangyayari yun. Okay? And, that, and the treatment is like that. Kung sakaling... The investing experiencing heavy losses And last point Paano naman kung sakaling merong impairment yung investee? Okay? Anong ibig sabihin nga ulit ng, invest, ng, ng, impairment, ng impairment? Meaning bumaba yung value ng investment mo okay? Maaaring kasi nagkaroon ng problema Okay? Now, okay? how do we recognize? How do we compute for the impairment? By the way, ito pala yung kanyang journal and then yung proforma You debit the loss in your credit and investment account Sa madali sa ito, kahit ano pa man lugi, ano pa baba Iisa lang naman yung parang concept We are recognizing expenses as losses and we credit the investment account Kasi nga, pag baba pa rin siya Okay? Ngayon, doon na tayo sa topic na impairment Okay? Paano natin masasabi na yung investment mo ay na-impaired? Okay? Magbura muna tayo ng mabilis. Okay? Ang sabi, we have to compare. Kailangan natin i-compare. Alin, yung investment account natin na basically represented siya ng carrying amount. Yan yung subsequent value niya, carrying amount. Okay? Iko-compare mo daw siya doon sa tinatawag na recoverable amount, recoverable. When we say we recover, okay, malamang yun na lang yung value niya ngayon kung sakaling makukuha mo yun. Okay? Again, kung sakaling mas mababa ang recoverable amount, what can we say? It is impaired. In a sense na ang nare-record mo kasi yung 100,000, pero yung investment mo na yan 80,000 na lang pala ang mare-recover mo. Therefore, bumaba siya, impaired na yun. Okay? Kung sakali namang the other way around, let's say mas mataas ang recoverable amount kaysa sa caring amount, we will simply ignore. Kasi hindi naman tayo at fair value whatsoever. Okay? Tsaka conservatism, di ba ka? So again, kung sakali mas mababa lang ito, tsaka natin, okay, masasabi na merong impairment. But then, ano itong recoverable amount? Di ba ang vague pa? Okay? Ano yung ibig sabihin na marirecover mo? Paano mo marirecover ang investment mo? Paano mo marirecover? Ang sagot, may dalwa, May dalawang option. Okay? The first one is what we call fair value less cost to dispose or cost to sell. Okay? And the second one is this what we call value in use. Okay? And basically, dito sa dalawang to, pipili ka ng whichever is higher. Ulitan, sa pagkikwenta ng impairment in this case, when we compare carrying amount and recoverable amount, we have to choose whichever is lower. Pero itong recoverable amount, big pa yan. May panggagalingan yan. And that is what? The fair value less cost to sell and the value in use, whichever is higher. Yung iba malilito dito kasi ang iniisip nila, palaging whichever is lower. Sa pagkakataong ito, impairment pero merong panimilian na whichever is higher. Okay, mas liwanagin natin. Again, recoverable amount. Paano mo ba marirecover ang investment mo kay associate? Unang dahilan, o isang unang paraan, I mean, unang paraan, ibenta mo at malamang marirecover mo yan. And that is what we call fair value less cost to sell. Na basically, kung ibebenta mo yung investment mo, magkano? Malamang kung magkano yung presyo ngayon. 
fair value. Okay? And then therefore, kung sakaling ibibenta mo, maaaring may related cost dyan. Yun na yung cost to sell. Therefore, tanggalin mo. Again, paano marerecover ang investment mo? Meron kang dalawang option. Una, ibenta mo. Okay? This is true selling. True selling. Okay? And the second one, wag mong ibenta. Ano? Gamitin mo. Kaya ang sabi, value in use. In use. Meaning, manatili ka na investment in associate. In a sense na, hindi mo pa nga naman kikita. Okay? Ang ibig ko sabihin, itong value in use is yung value kung patuloy kang mananatili as an investor. And then, as you stay, malamang makakatanggap pa ng other benefits. Okay? May papasok din naman sa yung pera. Okay? Malamang saan mang gagaling yun. Basically, dun sa dividends na matatanggap mo through time. Eh, okay? therefore, pag patuloy kang investor, para patalagi kang makakatanggap na nga ng, ano, ng dividendo. And then, other way, other one, is is what we call, yung, yung principal. Okay? The fact na matatanggap mo rin naman yung iyong capitalization as time goes on, maaari kasi ibenta mo rin sa iba. O, di ba? Lalo na kung malibawa ay may other buyer, let's say, ikaw si Juan, ikaw may ari nun, may nagta mo kay Pedro. Okay? Kahit sabihin natin merong trust fund doctrine, ang sabi lang, bawal lumabas dun sa corporation. Pero yung magpalit ng may ari, may pwede mo namang gawin yun. So, again, ang value in use is yung marerecover mo. Okay? Dun sa ano? Dun sa, sa mismo investment. Kasi may parating na dividends, yung mga fruits na nga, okay? At saka yung principal. Pag-ibinenta mo na. Pagtagal. Okay? Ngayon, itong mga to, maaaring matagal pa mangyari yung mga yan. You are just projecting them. Okay? Therefore, kung sakaling malayong panahon pa, papasok ulit yung konsepto ng time value of money. Okay? So, going back, okay? Ito naman po yung sarili computation. Parang pinapaliwanag, na, pinapaliwanag lang natin yung theories na. Ang sinasabi ko, okay? How will you recover your investment? Okay? You have two options. The first one is to sell it. The second one is to use it. Okay? So, use. Ngayon, kung ikaw yung investor, na kwenta mo yan, okay? Nalaman mo pag ibibenta mo ang value, let's say 75,000. Kung sakaling gagamitin mo, okay? Including everything, okay? Lalabas 80,000. Magdesisyon ka, okay? Anong mas pipiliin mo? Gamitin at magbibigay sa'yo ng 80,000? Or ibenta at magbibigay sa'yo ng 75,000? Common sense dictates kung ano yung mas favorable sa'yo, yun ang magiging pipiliin mo. Yun ang pipiliin mo. Ang ibig ko sabihin, hindi mo siya ibibenta but rather gagamitin mo siya. Kaya nga, kaya nga, when we choose recoverable amount, paano mo marirecover, you have to choose the better option. And the better option is whatever is higher. Okay? Kaya whichever is higher dito sa dalawang ito. And again, kung namili ka na ang sabi mo, hindi ko siya ibibenta, tuloy, gagamitin ko yan. Therefore, the recoverable amount is 80,000. Nga lang yung nakarecord sa'yo, okay, ay ano, maaaring mas mataas yung carrying amount na nga. Okay? Therefore, what can we say? Pag ginamit mo, 80,000 na lang ang ibabalik sa'yo. Pero currently, nakarecord sa libro mo, amounting to 100,000. So, what can we say? The investment is impaired. Therefore, you have to make this entry. Okay? So, I believe, okay na po tayo, ano, marami po tayong napag-usapan patungkol sa, sa introduction sa investment in associate accounting, okay? Yung hindi kasali yung preference share, okay? Kung sakaling merong other changes, ganun din naman yung epekto, parang ito lang din, okay? And investment with heavy losses, at saka yung impairment na nga. Yung ibang bagay pa patungkol sa investment in associate sa mga susunod na panahon. Basta ngayon, we are just trying to introduce this uh, investment na kung saan ang, investi na nga, ang investor ay meron na nga significant influence. Kung sakaling nag-enjoy ka, maaari nyo i-like itong video discussion na ito. Pero kung gusto mong may mas matutunan pa, nandito pa yung ibang mga discussion namin patungkol sa investment in associate accounting. So yun lamang at maraming salamat.